Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to an amazing library that makes working with Link extremely fast and it removes most of the memory allocations. Two of the biggest complaints about using Link. Not only does it make it fast by just removing allocations, but it uses some pretty advanced things that Microsoft hasn't actually implemented yet and it's highly compatible with Link, meaning whatever works with this library works with Link too. In fact, the test to prove it is running the test that Microsoft has for Link all 9,000 and something of them against this library and they work. So I'm just going to have here. I have a simple console application. doesn't really have anything but this benchmark file. I'm using benchmark.net for these benchmarks and I'm going to be showing what this library can do mainly using benchmarks because if you can write any link, this library can do. This library can do more as well to optimize performance even further, but I'm just going to be focusing on some things that all of us are doing. And to do that, I'm going to be generating 10,000 integers in an array and I'm going to be running all the tests against these values. And I'm using a deterministic randomizer here with just some random number uh, to make sure that all the numbers I'm generating for all of my tests and all of my benchmarks are the same every time they're generated. So I'm going to start with the simplest thing that you can possibly do. This is the benchmark we're going to be running. We're going to be using the modulus to see if that's zero and then we're going to be selecting to multiply by three and then get the sum out of this method. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to NuGet and I'm going to add Zlink into the project. Zlink is that library I'm talking about. It's part of many Z libraries that are focusing on performance. This developer is excellent as well and it's an open source project. So I'm going to put the link in the description. Highly recommend you give it a star. It's a great, great project and great developer. And there's some other things here which we might talk about later. And if you'd like to see more of this, let me know and I'll make another video. And if you want to turn this, which as you can see currently it's the same thing, but if you want to turn this into a Z-Link query, which is using this performance library, all you have to do is say as value enumerable. So once you do that, any subsequent link will be using a value enumerable, which is how all of this is being optimized. Because value enumerable is a read-only ref struct, it's going to be stripping a lot of the allocations that we would normally have. So for this scenario, if I just go ahead in the terminal, and I say run this in release mode, let's see what we get back, just to get a, a bit of a benchmark to understand how things stand currently. The results are back, and as you can see, in this particular example, we have a pretty big improvement of 1.2 microseconds, which is decent, and no memory allocation. This will actually play a big role when you have these garbage collection events by all that link you're using. So all of this now is both faster and more memory efficient. You're actually going to see way more performance improvements in terms of speed in other examples. I just want to show a basic example to give you an idea of how this comes together. The next example I'm going to show you goes like this. What if you have something like this, where we have the same initialized thing here, but then we're using that enumerable and do a for each loop and we're adding all the numbers and then just returning the result. I have the exact thing here too. Nothing changes. Everything still works exactly as it would work with link. However, when I go ahead and I run these benchmarks, check out the results. So as you can see, not quite half the speed, but very, very close. And again, no memory allocations. If we take a look at the as value enumerable method, I want to show you the value enumerable because it's actually very, very impressive. It is using, it is of course the enumerator and you pass this T parameter here, but it is, if you use .NET 9 onwards, which in this case I'm using, and allows a ref struct, which is a .NET 9 thing, which it's very complex to explain, and maybe I can explain in another video if you want, leave a comment down below if you want me to tell you, but not only is it a struct, it's also an I value enumerable, so there is an interface involved, and when it can be optimized even further, it allows ref struct to remove even more allocations and be very, very flexible with how and where it can be used. The last thing I want to show you, which is something that it's usually a problem if you're doing a lot of link stuff with chaining link, is the following. Here I have a for each loop with a pretty long chain of events over here. So we're doing more than 10 multiply, more than 10 multiply. Now you wouldn't have this scenario really in production if you do, that's insane. Uh, but it's a great way to showcase what happens when you have more chaining and how link can decrease in performance exponentially as you add more methods in the chain. So I'm going to again run this benchmark this time and take a look at what we have. All right, so results are back, and as you can see, it's 10 times faster and no memory. You have a kilobyte of memory here, no memory here, and extremely performant. 
quite honestly, I'm going to try this with my tests on my own system to see how this plays around, how if there's any reason my tests will fail for using it. But as you can see here, SciSharp has done an excellent job. Give it a star like I'm doing right now. And as it's described, it's using link to span. That's where most of the features are coming from, most of the performance. Link to SIMD, which is actually something that Microsoft is doing a lot in Dalton as well. Link to tree for file system JSON and game object. And it works with Unity and Godot, which is really, really cool. You can actually browse this and see other examples as well and reasons why it works. It's already 99% compatible with Dota 10's link updates, including shuffle, right join and left join, which are coming as well as the ability to use allows refstract from .NET 9 onwards, like I showed you. It's really, really cool. It talks about how 9,000 tests are passing for the tests that they run on the link.test official project. And you can actually see that here, if you want to browse the tests yourself, this is exactly what they're running. And the last thing I want to show you is actually quite cool. You can do the following. When you're using spans and stack alloc, which I do quite a lot, let's say you have something like this. You have a span that's using stack alloc, um, and you want to potentially use link with the span. Now, that would sound like an oxymoron. Why would you use a link on a span? That would just kill the performance. Well, actually, you can't use link in a span. There's no select. There is no enum. I mean, you can get the enumerator, but it's not an enumerable. You don't have where, you don't have any of that. But as you might have seen, you do have as value enumerable, which then means you're going to have full link support on spans, which is insane it's so cool usually when you work with spans it's so hard to do things that seem trivial with any other collection type but having this and having it be so performant is just incredible no allocations at all and you can basically do everything you could before i highly recommend it again give it a on github check it out i really really like this and i want to support the project to go even further but no one from you what do you think about this and have you used other fast link packages because they do exist leave a comment down below let me know well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding